pleasant good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to our Cathedral of Praise Saturday 6 p.m. service. And so for this afternoon, our prayer will be focused on our Go Group ministry. So for all of you who are joining us live stream, for those, those of you at the campuses and all of the branches, and let's all please stand up and let's all pray in the name of... Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this great privilege that we can gather together, Lord God, and worship you, gather together in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that in our nation, we have the freedom to worship you. We have the freedom to study your word, of God, in our own homes. Thank you, Lord God, for this privilege. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the gospel. The gospel, Lord, that has changed our life. The gospel, Lord God, that has made us, Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit flowing our lives, oh God, empowering us, teaching us the word. We thank you, Lord God, for his leadership. We thank you for his guidance. That in, even as we gather together in our homes, in the offices, doing go group, Lord God, the Holy Spirit is there, Lord God, the supernatural flowing because of the work of the Spirit. And we thank you, Father, that in our go group ministry, you have given us the opportunity to serve your people. God, leaders, able to lead your people, oh God, disciples, and Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity in our go groups that we can have fellowship with each other. And that, Lord, we can worship you, Lord God. We can give glory to your name, Lord God, as if the Holy Spirit is able to work in our lives. And, Father, we thank you that, God, you are always working according to your will. We thank you, Lord God, it's your will for every one of your children, for every one that seems to be God, to be fruitful and productive for you. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will help us, Lord God, give us the Greatness. Lord, that we will not be ashamed to share the gospel. That we will not be ashamed, Lord God, to reach out, Lord God, to our neighbors, to our family members, Lord, to our office mates, oh God. And Lord, we thank you for all of our members, oh God. Lord, the business people that you have given them the privilege, the authority, Lord God, that influence, Lord God, that they may use their influences, Lord, to share the gospel with the people around them, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord. That it is your will for us to bear fruit and fruit that remains. And even as we share the gospel and people are saved, we thank you that you will help us. We will bring them into the goals of God. And that Lord, from these new believers, we are able to open more go groups. And we thank you for giving us open more go groups. God, we thank you that you are raising up leaders among us. Workers, Lord God, Lord, giving them the heart to serve your people. That God, there will be leaders who will take care of these people. Oh God, gather together in their communities, gather together in their homes, in their offices. And we thank you, Lord, that you will help us be able to connect more people to Jesus Christ. God, as we have shared the God, we will be able to bring them into the farm, into the local church, and into the good groups of God. And Father, we thank you that God, you're always working the hardest for Thank you, Lord, for all the programs that you have given us, Lord God, in the name in South Carolina. Father, we lift them on my way, God, and in this world, that your name will be glorified, that the work of God will be so prosperous and flourish in these places, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that God, you will be able to help us every branch of God, every campus. Lord, we thank you that we will be able to open more satellites. We'll be able to open more campuses of God. Lord, even as go groups multiply, we thank you for all these new churches we heard. And we thank you, Lord God, that your name will always be more Jesus is the light of this world, and the unfolding of his word gives light. Jesus is the Christ. Not a way, a truth, and one way of life. At COP, we know that like the apostles, we are to preach the gospel publicly and from house to house. It is a privilege to be in your homes sharing the gospel. At COP, we know a pastor is to teach the Word of God, enabling us to live lives that please the Lord. Amen. 
At COP, we know we are to preach the gospel to the poor, bringing them to what Jesus called life and life more abundantly. At COP, we heal the sick in Jesus' name, and our God is with us even to the end of the age. At COP, we know that the message is the gospel. We love it, we live it, and we preach it. It is the good news, and it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. Amen. At COP, our eyes are on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We don't worship worship, we don't worship fellowship, we worship Jesus. At COP, we know that we have been called by God to be priests. We are to serve Him. We don't live in our own little world. We serve Him fervently until every lost person is found. We will build 200 churches across our land and across the world in the next 20 years. At COP, we know every member has been given the Great Commission, so we joyfully work while it is yet day, seeing people born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and learning to live for God. At COP, we know that we are to bear fruit and not to gather fruit. There is no shortage of people that need to hear the gospel. Our joy is to go to the harvest field and then bring the harvest field to the Lord. At COP, we know we are to fill His house with His praise. We praise the Lord. We praise Him for who He is and what He does. If it's not about Him, it's not praise. At COP, we know that the tithe is not about obedience to the law. It is before the law, during the law, and even Jesus taught tithing. It is our joy to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse to the Lord. At COP, we know prosperity is about trusting our Heavenly Father for everything we need. No fear of debt, no fear of poverty, no fear of people. Our Father is our provider. At COP, we know that Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father. That means that we are part of a great family of God across this world. When one part of that family needs help, it is our role freely give as we have freely received. At COP, we know God's grace abounds to us, teaching us to say no to sin and to work hard for Him.
for two people for water baptism, Woo! both of which are coming from the East Campus. Yeah. Yes, and here at the East Campus, we are rejoicing with Jesusa Albus Woo! and Brian Joshua Akluba. Yay! Amen. Let's now go to South Campus with Pastor Alex. Thank you so much, Pastor. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 6 p.m. worship service here in Cathedral, Cathedral of Praise. We want to welcome each and every one of you joining us in all of our campuses, branches, and online. And welcome to all of our Go Groups. Welcome to our Go Group Emphasis Weekend. We will have a wonderful time in the presence of God. Amen. Now, here in COP, we love to pray. So, any point during the worship, if you have any prayer requests, any prayer need, all you have to do is go to the altars, and our pastors would love to pray for you. And if you find yourself there in the main campus balcony, all you have to do is go to the center aisle, and our pastors will meet you there. Now, let's ask our wonderful water baptism respondents to please get themselves ready, and let me ask you this marvelous question. Are you ready to worship the Lord some more? Yes. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 To the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came, and he died, and he rose, those walls are rubble now. Yeah. Remember those giants we called death and grave, and they were like mountains that stood in our way. Oh, but he came, and he died, and he rose, those giants are dead now.
to our Go Group Emphasis Weekend in all of our campuses and branches. We are so excited to have you here tonight to talk about some of what our Go Groups do, why you should be a part, or maybe why you should have one and be a leader yourself. But one of the great joys that comes with Go Group Emphasis Weekend is also getting to pray for new leaders who are going to be Go Group leaders. So in our campuses and branches, would our new leaders come on forward tonight? Tonight, between all of our campuses and branches, we've got 36 wonderful new leaders that we're going to be praying for. And this weekend, we're going to be praying for 180 new leaders between all of our campuses and all of our branches. Now we're going to go through and we are going to read our wonderful leaders pledge together. So leaders and worship team, would you all read together with me? Before God and before his people today. Before God and before his people today. I make a commitment to live. I make a commitment to live. Not a perfect life. Not a perfect life. But a godly life. But a godly life. That sets a good example. That sets a good example. For those who follow my leadership. For those who follow my leadership. I will never speak against a fellow leader. I will never speak against a fellow leader. And will be loyal to God. And will be loyal to God. And loyal to the leadership above me. And loyal to the leadership above me. I will never violate. I will never violate any confidence of counseling. Any confidence of counseling of any of God's people. Of any of God's people. And will be trustworthy. And will be trustworthy of all of members. Of all members and church data. And church data entrusted to me. Entrusted to me. I will serve God and His people. I will serve God and His people. I will love God and His people. I will love God and His people. I will never use the people. I will never use the people for my own personal profit or gain. For my own personal profit or gain. But will always serve. But will always serve with joy. With, with joy, joy and patience. And patience. I recognize that the I most <laughs> excited Kayo. <laughs> Relax. Let's try again. I recognize that the most important thing. I recognize that the most important thing in my leadership. In my leadership is my walk with God. Is my walk with God. To walk in His presence. To walk in His presence. I will read my Bible. I will read my Bible. Pray and worship. Pray and worship. Every day. Every day. I will be in God's house. I will be in God's house. At least twice a week. At least twice a week. I will keep my heart open. I will keep my heart open. To God. To God. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen our campuses and branches can we stretch out our hands to our wonderful new leaders tonight and let us all pray for them dear Heavenly Father Lord we come to you and we lift up to you Lord these wonderful new leaders in our campuses and in our branches tonight father we pray Lord God that you give them a heart Lord to serve you a heart to serve your people Lord that they will be after your own heart Lord God that when they look at the people they see them as you see them father we pray Lord God that you will give them wisdom and guidance Lord God in how they are to serve you and how they are to serve your people Lord we thank you that the same anointing Lord God that rests upon the leadership of this house Lord God shall also rest upon them that Lord in their go groups Lord let them see signs miracles and wonders take place let it be a place Lord God of answered prayers of breakthroughs of dream homes and dream jobs and dream cars Lord we thank you that you will use them mightily Lord God all the days of their life and that Lord ultimately they will point people towards you and help people to grow in their relationship and their walk with you we thank you Lord God for how you will continue to use them and also Lord how you will bless them as they serve you we give you the glory honor and praise in Jesus name amen, amen and amen let's give them all a big round of applause again and you may all head back to your seats and in our campuses and branches, you may all please be seated. And let's turn our attention to the screen for this week at COP, followed by Pastor Sumrall's Offering Teaching.
This week at COP, we at COP have sowed a seed of generosity to help the poor, one that we know you will be thrilled about. When Pastora A and Brother EJ went to Israel last week, they brought with them a precious gift from us, COP, a donation to help the suffering people in war-torn Israel at this time. This gift is being distributed by our IGT family there to help the refugee families who were displaced by the Hamas invasion, to help the families of IDF soldiers who are deployed in Gaza, and to help the kitchens feeding struggling families right now and other worthy charities as all of Israel pulls together in one effort. The recipients want to say thank you, COP. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the love. And most of all, thank you for the prayers during this season. This week at COP, a morning prayer testimony from Dr. Paula Maliari. Dr. attends morning prayer at least once a month, as Pastor has asked, and has made her request that she would pass the exams for the Philippine Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition, because the passing rate in this particular exam is notoriously microscopically low. But God answered her prayers, and she is now one of only 57 pediatric gastroenterologists in our country. This week at COP, we rejoice with the angels of heaven over souls being saved. What better thing could we hear than teens winning teens to the Lord? Together with the teens department and Jesus Impact, Brother Manny Pena opened the door to his high school where he's the principal for a two-day total of 1,449 students and teachers who said yes to Jesus Christ as Savior. More teens winning teens as Pastora Yam took teens to Rojas High School school for evangelism, 100 saying yes to Jesus, and for follow-up. Praise God for the establishment of Go Groups and for those teens already connected to church services. SNL Campus Tour was at PLM this week, where we praise God that out of 237 in attendance, 159 gave their lives to the Lord. We praise God for the huge number of Echo Youth Choir, Resound Teens Choir, NASA Musicians, COP Dancers, CAM, Kool-Aids, and Team Ministry members who volunteered for these outreaches. Our mighty men in uniform praise God for 253 saved from policemen, security personnel, and army testing office applicants. Our Luke's Call Medical mission was in Kauid this week where 56 patients were seen, 46 children were treated for their teeth, and 35 souls were saved. From COP Dubai, we're happy to say an anniversary celebration of Asiana travel and tours saw 24 executives and professionals exit accepting Jesus. Our Legal Advocates Fellowship with the Joyful North Trio thank God for the 31 people who were saved and availed of free legal advice at the Legal Department at Barangay Holy Spirit, QC. This week at COP, a tithing commitment testimony from COP Dubai. Sister Pao was challenged by the message that we can trust God with our tithes, that the 90% will go farther than the 100% ever could. After her husband lost his job, they decided to open a side hustle taking care of children, and Pao made a decision to tithe on the income of that. After that decision, the number of children grew to the point that that income pays for their apartment every month. So she made another decision to pay tithes on her regular salary from her job. Two weeks later, she was promoted to managerial level with a 40% increase with a new location to work only 15 minutes away as opposed to the four hours she previously spent traveling. This week at COP, let's give God all the glory for the harvests our brothers and sisters are dedicating to Him. We have dedicated cars. Ami Chanko dedicated her white Toyota Corolla Cross. The Atienza family, their red Toyota Vios. From COP Albay, the Albainza family, their pearl white Yaris. The Oliveira family, their Toyota Avanza. Olivia Salazar, her Toyota Avanza. From Batangas, the Arpia family, their black MG. Paul Andrew Guerrero his Honda City, Pastor Earl and Doc Jai, their Toyota Rays CVTE, the Apolinario family, their Toyota Corolla Cross, the Jimenez, Montemayor and Bonas family, their Mitsubishi Expander, the Navarrete family, their Honda BRV, and Noemi Lee dedicated her Ford Everest 2.0 Turbo Trend. 
We have dedicated homes and businesses. The Cunanan family dedicated their new resort in Las Baños, Laguna. This is a morning prayer testimony for this family of new believers. Stephen Pagorogon dedicated his automotive and tinting business. Ronald Obana dedicated his printing business. Bong Tenyedo praises God for the dedication of his New Zealand Plus office in Ortigas. The Sevillana family dedicated their home in Tagig. Davos, Ian and Joanne dedicated their five-door apartment as well as a motorcycle. Alvin and Carol from Kawi dedicated these two e-bikes which will be used as a school transport business. HTC's Arcega family dedicated their extra house to the Lord, a place for the family to relax and for the Go Group to gather. And Kawi's Esguera family dedicated their new home. Coming up at COP. Looking forward to our Worship Our Wonderful God at North Campus on Wednesday night, March 20, 7 p.m. Worship Our Wonderful God or Wow God is always best enjoyed with someone who needs Jesus. Coming up at COP, our specialized quarterly fellowship is with Pastor this coming March 16, Saturday at East Campus. Fellowship time is 10 a.m. to 12 noon with free blood sugar screening for early birds. Finally, coming up at COP, let's look ahead to School of the Cross on Good Friday, March 29 in all campuses. It has been another great week at COP. Now from our offering thought for Go Group Weekend, I want to talk to you about the prosperity of the gospel. Everybody say, the gospel succeeds. Say it again. The gospel is not a failure. Sometimes as Christians, you know, people have this idea that somehow the gospel fails, but the gospel never fails. Colossians chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, NIV 84, says that the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven, and you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel. Now notice what he says, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace and all its truth. Verse 6 in the ESV, gospel which has come to you. As indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and increasing as it also does in you. Everybody say, the gospel never fails. The gospel, everywhere it goes, the gospel succeeds, the gospel prospers, whatever word you want to talk about it. Because there's life in the gospel. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Paul said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. Everybody say, it is the power of God for salvation. I've always taught you that the, the power is not in the messenger, the power is in the message. You can have a donkey stand up and preach the gospel and people will get saved and healed. The power is in the message, not in the messenger. And this is why sometimes Christians get a little stumbled because they see a, a preacher who they know is not living right. They see a preacher who's living in sexual immorality or drunkenness or drug addiction or whatever. And they see that people are getting saved and people are getting healed and Christians stumble. You should not stumble. The power is not in the messenger. The power is in the message. Where is the message? Ever, excuse me. Where is the power? All over the world. The gospel is bearing fruit, Paul said, and growing. Everybody say, bearing fruit and growing. Say it again. Now, the only thing that holds back the spread of the gospel is us, it's preaching. Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 14, how then will they call on him whom they not believe? And how are they to believe in him whom they not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? Now, I was reminded the other day, sometimes you, you learn things in the past and you've forgotten about them because they're so irrelevant to you. But I was reminded the other day about one of the great wrong doctrines in this world. Now, people who believe this, I believe they're still going to heaven. A lot of our Baptist brothers and sisters believe in something called the doctrine of election. Everybody say, the doctrine of election. Now, making it very simple, the doctrine of election basically says that in the sovereignty of God, 
God has chosen a certain group of people to be saved, and those people will be saved in the sovereignty of God. That's what it says. Now, we don't believe that. We believe that God wants everyone to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. I didn't hear you. But a church that believes in the doctrine of election oftentimes develops as an event center. They're just trying to attract Christians because they truly believe in their hearts. And I believe these people are going to heaven. They've just got a few wrong doctrines. But they truly believe in their heart that in the sovereignty of God, everybody who's going to be saved will be saved. And so they see no big need for evangelism. They, they see no great need to do crusades. They see no need to go door to door and evangelize a barangay. They see no need to do any of that. Because in their minds, everybody who's going to be saved, everybody who God has chosen will be saved. Now, I drastically disagree with their doctrine because their doctrine may not affect their salvation, but their doctrine affects the salvation of many other people, and it affects the entire methodology of the church. How can they believe in him whom they've not heard, and how can they hear without someone preaching. Now, beloved, we need to preach the gospel. I didn't hear you. And we need to preach it in a variety of places. Acts chapter 5, verse 42, and every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Messiah or that Christ is Jesus. Now, I want you to notice they preached it two ways. They preached it public and they preached it private. Everybody say public and private. We need to preach the gospel in both ways. We need to preach the gospel in the big public arenas, but we also need to preach the gospel house to house. Now, I'm going to get more into this in our sermon tonight, so I don't want to move all the way into the sermon already, but I want you just to begin to understand. God's will is for all men to be saved. How many men? All men, all mankind to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. That's the will of God. The gospel has the power to do that. The only thing restraining the success, the prosperity of the gospel is our refusal to preach it both publicly and from house to house. We need to preach the gospel. And everybody said? All right, that's my offering thought tonight. Would you put your tithe in the red envelopes, please? Put your seed in the blue envelopes. If you have remain funds, you can put them in the green envelopes. Up in the balcony, we have the baskets out here on the ground floor and all across the city. Come, bring your tithe and your seed before the Lord. Say so, say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 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 Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. I am the song the angels cannot sing of His amazing grace. His love has set me free. Oh, give thanks, for He is good. His love endures always. Come on. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The Lord say so. The Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the 
my morning to dancing And he turned my sorrow to joy Goodness and mercy are following And miracles are on my door I'm saved from the hand of the enemy Come on and let me hear you say Say so, say so Open up your mouth and say Say so, say so Let the say to say bye-bye problem oh, yeah. and bye-bye fear. Oh, yeah. Let the redeem of the Lord say, say, come on. say bye-bye problem ah. and bye-bye fear. Ah. Let the redeem of the Lord say, so. say yeah. so. Everlasting joy above, oh. above my head. Oh. Let the redeem of the Lord everyone to stand up please and the most amazing ushers to help us let's stretch forth our hands towards his tights our vows our seed and our daily water battle seed before the lord and let us pray god we thank you so much for this beautiful evening that you have given to us that once again we can give back to you your tithes and lord we are believing god that you're gonna throw open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessings in the lives of your people that there'll be no more room to contain it and god we thank you that us will fulfill our vows so god truly lord that you provide seed to the sower that it's not about pressure it's all about prayer and god we are looking forward god for a new generation of your people oh god who will be dream house owners oh god thank you lord for more dedications of dream farms dream houses oh god dream condos lord god and we know god that you are the god who is faithful and true to your promises and god we pray for every one of us that yes god we will continue to be faithful in preaching the gospel god to our families our friends our neighbors our office mates and our campuses and lord we will cover the nation and even across the world with the gospel receive this lord this tithes and offering as an act of our worship and thanksgiving this we pray in jesus name amen and amen let's remain standing and let's continue to worship the lord some more This 
realm of earthly kingdom crumbles into flames, you still be Lord of all. You still be Lord of all. You still be Lord of all. Lord of all. When the last kingdom crumbles, when the last sunset falls, you still. some great principles when it comes to go groups. Now, I have 12 pages. We'll see how far we get. But I've got 12 pages. So, hmm. Now, we're calling tonight Reach My. And the reason why we're saying Reach My is there is somebody that each and every one of us can reach. Can reach to journey 
can reach to connect to a go group, can reach to save. There's somebody we're praying for, whether it's in our family, our homes, whether it's in our offices, our schools. There is someone that we are praying for, claiming for, and believing to get saved. Now, as we go through, we're going to understand some important principles tonight. But we always want to remember that it should be a part of our regular walk to be reaching out to people. That we should be encouraging people to get to know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. Simply because we know and understand that Jesus came to seek and save the lost, which we see in Luke 19, verse 10. But when you take a look at the churches now, you take a look at churches who often want to remove the home from the life-changing impact of the gospel. Yes, the gospel is so good when you go out and you evangelize, but the home aspect of the gospel is truly essential for it to be lasting in people's lives. Many people today often want their privacy, and they don't want what used to be called cell units, some people call them go groups, some people call them home groups, to happen in their home. They don't want to practice the hospitality in their home, and they don't want to invite other people to come into their house. And all of these desires are there to direct people not towards God, but towards, oh, I love you, but up until here. And it violates some of the scripture. Because when we take a look at scripture, we see some important points about the home. Now, my great question to you is, why not have people come into your home? Why not have a go group in your house? Now, the main reason for most people is that they simply don't want to be known. It's a Sunday mask. They focus on church just on Sunday or church just on Saturday. And that's the style of Christianity that they strive for or the style of Christianity that they practice in their home. But when we take a look at scripture, we see that we need to be welcoming of people in the home. In Romans 15 verse 7, it says, Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. We are to be welcoming people. And the home is the most effective place for ministry. This is why Jesus spent so much time in people's homes. Why he spent so much time going from house to house. And it is also the reason why he set the example for the apostles to spend so much time in the home. It is the most effective part of ministry. Now, everything about the Great Commission Everything about discipleship involves a key word, and that is the word go. And everything about Jesus is training spiritual leaders, and it involves the concept of the word go. It's like one of Jesus' favorite words, go. He's a very action-oriented person. Now, you take a look at the Great Commission in Matthew 10, verses 1 to 5. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every disease and every affliction. The name of the 12 apostles were these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Theodos, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These these 12 were sent out instructing them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans. We see in the Great Commission where they are to go and how Jesus would give clear instructions for different times and different seasons. Here Jesus is instructing them, you need to go to the Jew first. But no matter what season we are in, you see that key word, that action word of go when it comes to Jesus. Now, when you are going, you are also reaching. You are reaching out to people. You are sharing the gospel to people. And 
the church will never be able to minister to people until we move into the concept of the go to them mentality. Much of modern Christianity involves inviting people, come to us. But we need to move away of the come to us and the go to them concept. That is the biblical model that we see. Now, tonight we're going to take a look at three points. We're going to take a look at why is the home so important to Jesus. We're going to take a look at why does Jesus want me? And we're going to take a look at some practical best practices and reminders. So let's start first with why is the home so important to Jesus? Well, Jesus did a lot of stuff in people's houses. Jesus raised the dead during home visitation. Matthew 9, verse 23 to 25. Jesus came to the ruler's house. Jesus healed the sick during home visitation. Matthew 8, verse 14 to 15. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, Jesus visited the home in order to forgive sins. Mark 2, verse 1 to 5. And when he returned to Capernaum, which you can see if you come and join us in Israel Tour 2020. For November, contact Sister Myla for information. Thank you very much. After some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came to the house, bringing to him a sick, paralytic man carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him of the house. And when they had made an opening, let down on the bed which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus also visited in the home in order to teach people. And this is a major aspect of the importance of the home that we take a look at today. Luke 7, verse 36 to 43. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the house of the Pharisee and reclined at his table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table of a Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is, and who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom was canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. No matter people's attitudes towards Jesus, Jesus never missed out on a teaching opportunity, on a way to point people towards making wise choices, on a way to help people understand who he was, on a way to help people understand the gospel. And that's the goal of a Go Group still today. And Jesus set this pattern of how it should be in the homes and expected the Go Groups of their time and the apostles, the pastors and the leaders of their time to be able to continue what he has started. In Acts 5 verse 42, and every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. Every day, not ceasing house to house. House is important. Now, not just when it comes to salvation, but other appointments and other teaching opportunities would take place in the home done in the New Testament with the apostles. And it's important for us to understand that the pattern that Jesus set, the apostles continue and we strive to continue today. Peter visited Cornelius in his home in Acts 10, verse 17 to 25. 
Paul practiced visitation and home ministry in Acts 15, verse 36. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word and see how they are. In Acts 16, verse 32 to 34. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour that night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that had believed God. Acts 18, verse 7. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God, and his house was next door to the synagogue. So even though the house was directly next door to what was the church, he still went to the house. He didn't say, oh, you live right next door, you come to me. No, he still went to the house house. There is an emphasis in scripture of the importance of the house. Acts 20 verse 20, how I did not shrink from declaring to you that anything was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house. So there is no question in scripture that in Jesus's time it was important to go house to house. That time in church, time in God's house, and time in our homes studying the Word of God were both important and meant to be combined. Now Christians are to be devoted also to one another. Just as we come and we're devoted to the hearing of the Word of God and we're devoted to sharing the gospel, we are also called to be devoted to one another on a social basis. We are the body of Christ. Now, why is this important? Why is this something that Jesus taught and it is stressed in Scripture? Well, first and foremost, we live in a very sinful world. In John 17, verse 15 to 16, it says, I do not, spe I do not ask that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. We know that we still have to live in this world, regardless of sin and compromise that's going to be around us. We still need to be a seed in this world. We still need to be salt and light. We still need to be used by God. But a big part of this, as we're going to see later on in our practical application, is that we need the relationship of our brothers and sisters in Christ as there's a lot of not nice things out there. And we're going to take a look at the practical application of having the relationship in our homes to help us stay grounded in the Word of God. Now, number two, the world will also not socialize and understand us. They will sometimes invite us to compromise, but the people who are truly going to understand us as Christians are our co-brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because we're going the same direction. Amos 3 verse 3 says, if you cannot agree on the direction that you're going to go, you cannot walk together. And because we have our brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the same understanding of heaven. We have the same understanding of eternity. We know the importance of prayer. We know the importance of turning to God, of trusting God. And we can find that brotherly fellowship in our home when we come together to read the word and to pray together. So it is important for us to have this relationship and for it to grow because other people are not going to understand. In Acts 5, verse 13 to 14, it says, None of the rest of them dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. People are not going to always want to join you because you're going to have the reputation of, oh, you're the Christian, you're the good one, you're the one who's not going to compromise. But you are going to be esteemed because of your character. You're going to have the promotions because of your character. You're going to have the open door and opportunities and answered prayer because of your character. And when the world looks at you, they're going to look and see something is different 
I don't necessarily want to go and join them with how they're acting because I still want my sin and compromise. But I see something is different in them. And the world will understand that in God, in Christ, things are different for you. Now, in 1 John 1 verse 6, it says, If we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So who then are we to have fellowship with? We are to have fellowship with people who are in the light. We are to have fellowship with people who are the children of God. Because that's going to keep us from a compromising lifestyle. In Acts 2, verse 42 to 46, and I love this passage, it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and all had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, to any who had a need. And day by day, attending the temple together and the breaking of bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. You see a beautiful movement of God, a movement of Christ at this time in Acts chapter 2. And it didn't only take place when they came to God's house. It also took place in their homes. God can and desires to bless you in your home with your other brothers and sisters in Christ. This is why having fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ is important. Now, church research shows that people must begin to relate personally or start to have a relationship with at least six to ten people before they will stay committed into a local church. That is an interesting fact, that people need to relate or have a relationship with six to ten people before they will stay committed in a local church. Why? Because we were designed to need to be connected to one another. We were designed to be part of a body, to have fellowship. This is how God created us. So imagine if a new believer, for them to be grounded in God and to stay committed into a local church, they need to be connected to six to ten people, then what a perfect opportunity to journey them to a go group. That will help them stay connected. That will help them stay grounded. This is why we're saying everything for 2024 needs to happen in and through a go group. They are truly essential when it comes to our stability and our walk with God, not just when we come to church on the weekend, but to have people who relate to us in God's house. Now, at this point, we want to take a look at the screen for some encouraging news from some of our awesome Go Group leaders. Let's take a look. Why do we need to be part of a Go Group? Believers need fellowship with one another. 1 John 1 verse 7, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The Go Groups provide connections for discipleship through practical teaching. The Bible says in Acts 2 verses 42 to 43, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. In Go Groups, the teaching from the services and other topics are taught and applied on a practical level. Go Groups can model openness through real-life situations, successes, and failures. Go Groups also provide a connection for teaching by role modeling. It is said in Philippians 3 verse 17, Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. It is teaching and prayer by example. This is how we set biblical patterns for Christian parenthood, marriage, or business management based on the life examples of the members. This also reminds us to not neglect fellowship with other believers. Hi, I'm Amira. 
And I am proud to say that I am a product of a Go Group. My cousin invited me to go to their house for a Bible study. Then they took some time preaching the gospel to me and I got saved that night. I remember them lending one of their Bibles to me just so I could do my devotions. If they had not persisted in teaching me, encouraging me, and compelling me to grow in my relationship with God, I will not be where I am right now. Hello, COP family. I'm Anthony Gatchadian. They call me Kuya A. Uh, I've been a Go Group leader for more than 20 years now, from uh, the campus cell groups to home connect group, and now to office Go Group in BGC Taguig. It brings me great joy seeing working people like me connected with God and with one another, encouraging one another, praying for each other in an office setup. And over the years, I've seen how God blessed me with the provisions, uh, promotions as an executive, great opportunities, you name it, as I become uh, faithful in the office go group. You know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward as you serve Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Leia and this is Vince, my husband, our office go group leader here in Makati. When we started our go group, maraming maraming pagbabago in our business. Dati wala kami pangpasahot, nagsisarisan yung mga tao namin, wala kaming gamit. At siyang sila yung reputasyon namin, both of suppliers and other people. When we started the Go Group here in our company, spiritually, natutulungan namin silang mag-grow. Maraming blessings, maraming mga clients na dumating sa amin. Foreign companies, big clients, World Cup, FIBA, ASEAN, at saka even yung SEA Games. We've been partner it because God is with us. Hello, COP! We are the Silas family. We were invited to home go group during pandemic. Tinanggap namin si Lord at umatan kami ng Fortress 91. And later on, nakaroon po kami ng sariling go group. Kasama ang aming mga teachers and buong staff. And God blessed us from a tutorial center to a music school and another open branch. Yes, it's true! God helped us at naisama namin ang family namin, ang parents namin, and other relatives. Gumaling po ang aking ama, sa niya po sa likod, napakatagal na po masakit. At the same time, hindi po siya sa cancer. And I got high grades and I excel as an SB officer at my school. One great blessing is that we are all serving God in the ministry. Dati may hindi na ulo po, ngayon, hindi na lang. And aside from that, dati may bisyo ako, ngayon wala na. Thank you Lord for that. Hi, I'm Jim from Asia Pacific College at naimbitan ako ng classmate ko noon sa Go Group. Hindi ko po talaga alam kung ano ang Bible or hindi ba ako niniwala sa Diyos. Ang gulo-gulo po dati, parang hindi ko po alam kung ano yung gagawin ko sa araw-araw. At merong isang member ng COP ang Go Group at nag-evangelize siya sa amin. At pagkatapos ng evangelize, nagsabi ako ng yes, I was baptized and malaking malaking impact. Hindi lang impact sa school, impact sa life. A big difference talaga. Ang level ng saya ko noon, kaya lapag sa baba. Pero nung nakilala ko si God, pam, mas ano pa, reach the high sky. Nga. How can we be part of a Go Group? There are different kinds of Go Groups that you can choose to be part of. We have home Go Groups, office Go Groups, and school or campus Go Groups. You can approach your district pastor or your campus pastor and they will be willing to connect you to your preferred Go Group. They can also connect you around your office area. Say for example, in Makati, BGC, or Ortigas. Or you can also arrange a Go Group within your office as allowed by the management. If you are a business owner, why not open a Go Group for your workers, an early morning Go Group, or during breaks? If you are a student, we can connect you to existing Go Groups within your campus, or you can invite your friends and classmates so we can start a new Go Group in your school. So many opportunities, so many ways to reach out and gather together as a group. Come be part or open your own Go Group. And start seeing miracles. So COP, join the Go Group and be blessed! Amen. So from house to house or office to office, school to school, there is no shortage of opportunities. One, for us to be connected to other believers and two, to help connect other new believers in their walk with God. So let's take a look and understand together, why does Jesus want me? 
First, let's start, why does Jesus want me as a member of a Go group? Well, first and foremost, Jesus grouped people together in ministry, in fellowship, in all aspects. And we need to follow the same pattern that Jesus set. Now, you can see many examples in scripture where a leader or a member of a group failed or succeeded or whatever might have happened along their journey, but they still stayed together. God joined us because we have a need for fellowship. We are the body of Christ who is joined together. Let's take a look at some failure examples. Now, there's some times that we make mistakes. Why? Because we're all human. It happens. And at times in our failure, we choose or think that we need to go and hide. But instead, when we make a mistake, we should stay grounded where God has planted us. And let's see some examples of this. There was failure that was caused by some selfish ambition that James and John had in Matthew 10, <clears throat> verse 35 to 31, where they both desired to sit at the right hand of God. And James and John were rebuked by Jesus. And imagine the attitudes that were surfacing pride, superiority, all of those things. And James and John could have said, oh, well, I'm so offended, I'm going to leave. But instead, James and John chose to stay with the group. They knew that that is who they were joined together with. And the group also chose to stay with James and John. Thomas, another apostle, failed when he refused to believe until he saw and felt the body of Jesus himself in John 20, verse 24 to 25. But even being known as Doubting Thomas, he still chose to stay to the group that he was connected to. He chose to stay where Jesus had planted him. And the group chose to say, okay, Thomas, we know you doubted, but we still love you, and we're still going to stand with you and support you. The disciples who couldn't cast out demons had failed. In Matthew 17, verse 14 to 18, they're shouting at the top of their lungs, thinking it's all about the power, not realizing that it is about the name of Jesus. And at this point, Jesus could have been like, you crazy disciples, we're kicking you out. We're going to start something new. We're going to add new people to this group and grow. But no, they still stayed with the group. And the group and Jesus stayed with them. And they were able to grow in what they were able to accomplish and do in covering their area with the gospel. Peter also failed in Galatians 2, verses 11 to 14, when he refused to eat food with the Gentiles. But Paul still stayed with Peter, and Peter still stayed with Paul, and they came through. At some point in life, we're going to make a mistake. At some point in life, our leader or our member or our pastor is going to make a mistake. Why? I hate to tell you, you're human. We all are. But where we stay is important. If we're going to take a look at someone's mistake and kick them out, or our mistake and get embarrassed and feel we need to leave, then we're going to miss out on a growth opportunity. We're going to miss out on growing where God has planted us and that we can grow together encouraging one another in the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. And we're going to expand on that in a little bit. There are also, besides failure examples, success examples when it comes to these small groups. Ministry outreach. In Matthew 10, verse 1 and verse 5, And he called to them the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town among the Samaritans. And they were able to see great success in their ministry. And because of their success in their group, it prepared them for the next aspect of work, the next opportunity that Jesus was going to give them. They didn't get a big full head thinking, oh, we're all this and we're all that. But it prepared them for the great commission that then Jesus would then leave with them 
when he would go to heaven to be with God. Another success example we see is feeding the 5,000 in Matthew 14, verse 13 to 21. They had to work together as a group. Same when they were feeding the 4,000 in Matthew 15, verse 29 to 39. And no matter what happened, they continued to build one another up. They continued to encourage one another. That is what we are to do in our groups at home, at the office, at school. And as Jesus would teach them, would reveal to them, would give them more to do, it is the same in our life. God has plans for each and every one of you. And God is going to use you in your go group to help teach your co-go group members, and God is going to use your go group members to help teach and pour out onto you and pray for you and encourage you. And when you're going through a hard season in life, trust me, it's really nice to have people who are there that you can depend on that will pray for you and build you up in the word of God. Now, why does Jesus want you to be a go group leader? Well, Jesus chose industrial people. Peter and his brother Andrew were involved in a fishing business. So these were working people that we see in Matthew 4, verse 18. Matthew was involved as a tax collector, Matthew 9, verse 9. James and John were preparing nets for fishing, Matthew 4, verse 21. Jesus also would choose to work with people and make decisions and follow the guidance of God and the Holy Spirit. And he expected that the people that he would choose would also follow God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their life. And that is a very important factor as a leader, that you are allowing God and the Holy Spirit to lead you. Now, when it comes to choosing to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our life, Peter was a beautiful example of this as he ministered to Cornelius, as the Spirit revealed to him and spoke to him in Acts 10, verse 17 to 25, it gave him the understanding of what he should do in that specific situation to help Cornelius, to be able to guide him and encourage him through all that he was facing. Dr. Cho made some great statements. First statement, Dr. Cho said, Christians who have a clear and powerful testimony of what God has done for them are living proof that the gospel does work today. Such Christians demonstrate the reality of the life of Christ and others are drawn to them. We need to understand we have been given a testimony. Our first testimony at the point of salvation. And every single thing that God has done before salvation and after salvation. For us, for our family, for our business, our home, whatever it might be, is a testimony. And that testimony is something that we need to share in our homes, our streets, our barangays, our offices, our schools. Our testimony is part of the Great Commission because our testimony is telling people who God is and what he does. And that if he would do it for me, he will also do it for you. So your testimony matters. Dr. Cho also said the following, that dedication is a key in our walk with God. He said, you can usually tell whether a person is dedicated to the Lord and to your church by three things. Number one, his attendance record in church and other meetings, including cell groups, which is what we call go groups. Number two, his tithing record, which is an essential part of his life of faith. And three, his demonstrated commitment to the unity and the life of the church. Those who are overcritical or out of step with the majority will not easily follow the pastor or leader's direction for leading home cell groups. So another key aspect for us of why God wants you is because you are dedicated, because you care to follow God, to do what is right.
Now, we need to understand we were created for fellowship. We were created to encourage. That encouragement is vital in our spiritual growth as it takes place. That there are influences that come and go in the world, and there are so many bad influences in the world, that we also need to be a good and godly influence out there. There are so many people living a Christian life in front of you. And if you would come together and influence one another and encourage one another, that is applying what it says in Acts in building up one another. Now, older Christians are also encouraged as they pass on their wisdom to, and spiritual truth to baby Christians. Why is this? Because when you take a look at the pattern of the old and the young in Scripture, whether it is in age or spiritually, the old is known for their wisdom, and the young are known for their strength. So an old person has wisdom. An older person, or as we could say, an experienced person, has wisdom that they need to then teach and train the young ones so that the young ones would learn from the experience of the experienced ones on how they are to live, what they are to do. Now, older Christians can get discouraged and dried up unless they are around new life. It is like that senior citizen who just sits at home in their chair and never gets up. So when they start to get up, they're sore, they're aching, their bones don't walk well. But if a young person is going to be around that senior citizen every day and say, hey, let's go for a walk, hey, let's do this, don't just sit around, come on, and they get to see life in the young person, then that older person starts to choose life and not just sitting around in their chair. The same goes for spiritual leaders. Baby Christians can also get discouraged. Why? They're a baby Christian. They're still figuring things out. And they can get discouraged and blow up unless they are around people with wisdom and knowledge and understanding to help point them to God's not done. God has plans. God has promises. Let's pray about it together right now. Now, a major reason why we come together as a go group and why you as a leader is very important is in a go group we're not just learning the word but we're also learning to apply the word in our services we have the teaching and the unfolding of the word of god and it is proclaimed in a general way but in a go group the sermon is applied the discussion format is used to apply truth the truth, therefore, moves out of theoretical truth or something that's just in your head, and it then becomes something that you believe and you apply in your personal life. And the basic question starts to come like, what does this mean to me? How can I see this take place in my life? It is not enough to just see and hear the Word of God, but a Go group is a beautiful opportunity to learn the application of the Word in your heart and in your life. And as the application takes place in your heart and in your life, true change occurs. It doesn't just become head knowledge, but it's heart knowledge and application. Now, all of this comes to help us to become spiritually mature in our life. Now let's wrap it up with our best practices and reminders. Now, what is provided in this Go Group? You need to understand what is a Go Group for. Now, there are 29 things that a Go Group is for. And I'm not going to read every single one of these verses or else we really will be here till tomorrow morning. But I do encourage you, take a picture of this, and we'll post it also. And we're going to go through and understand 29 things that are a part of being a go group. Well, number one, I think is kind of like everyone's favorite. <laughs> yeah. We are part of a go group because one of the things we do together is we eat together. And it is biblical. 
in Acts 2, verse 46. We also greet one another in Philippians 4, verse 21. We comfort one another in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 4, because at some point we all need a little bit of comfort. We love one another, as seen in 1 John 4, 11. We learn submitting to one another. The principle of everybody gets to win sometimes, as we see in Ephesus 5, verse 21. We learn how to share with one another according to the word of God in Acts 2, verse 45. We learn how to embrace one another and be there for one another, as we see in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 20. We also learn how to suffer together in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 26. That you're not going through something alone or your go-group member isn't going through something alone. But you're there for each other through the ups and the downs. Not just the good times, but also the bad times. Now, if you're there through suffering together, that means you're also there to rejoice together in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 26. Rejoice with that dream job, with that dream house, with that, I don't know, dream guy, dream girl, whatever it is you're rejoicing with, we will all rejoice together with you. Now, we come together, number 10, to bear each other's burdens. Not to go through life alone, but to help one another out. Because when we spread out the load, it helps one another. People go through hard times and hard seasons, and we should be there for one another. We see this in Galatians 6 verse 1. We also come together to restore one another in, in Galatians 6 verse 1. Why? Because nobody is perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. So we all need to help one another to restore them and to point one another to the word of God. We pray together in Acts 2 verse 42. And the beautiful thing is when we pray together, God hears. When God hears us, God answers. And we see beautiful answered prayers taking place in our go groups. We come together as well to teach one another through the word of God, through life experience, application. And we see this in Colossians 3, verse 16. We also admonish one another, also seen in Colossians 3, verse 16. We learn to practice hospitality and serving and caring for one another, which we see in Romans 12, verse 13. We learn how to be candid with one another, how to speak frankly according to the word and what's right, and to freely discuss in Ephesians 4, verse 25. We learn communication, which is essential for all parts of our life, but we learn to do it the biblical way in Ephesians 5, verse 19. We learn how to refresh one another because we all have some low days and hard days and bad days, but we need to learn how to pour into each other's cup as well, so to speak, in Romans 15, verse 32. And refreshing one another goes along with encouraging one another in Romans 1, verse 12. We learn to serve together, that we're not there to be served, but we're there to serve side by side with one another in Philippians 1, verse 27. Along with serving together, we learn how to work together, not just in a home go group or school or office situation, but applying it outside our go groups to our practical life, whether it's ministry, whether it comes to learning how to do well in our office, we learn how to work together in Colossians 4 verse 11. We learn how to stimulate one another to love, Hebrews 10 verse 24, and to stimulate one another to good work. Not the bad work that's out there that the world is going to try and influence you to do, but to the good work in Hebrews 10 verse 24. We learn how to honor one another and to give credit to where credit is due in Romans 13, verse 7. We learn how to forgive one another because Christ forgave us and we need to learn how to do that with other people in Ephesians 4, verse 32. We learn also how to weep together and go through life with one another in Romans 12, verse 15. We learn how to edify one another in Ephesians 4, verse 16. We also learn how to confess to one another because sometimes that's kind of hard and we keep things from one another or not admit the wrongs that we have done, which we see in James 5 verse 16 and Matthew 5 verse 23 to 24. 
We learn how to confront one another, which isn't always fun, but there is a right and a biblical way to do it. In Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17, all 29 of these things should you experience in a go group. And I'm telling you, these 29 things are not just going to affect your home life, but they're going to cascade into your work life. They're going to cascade into your school life. And applying these 29 principles, these 29 togethers, are going to change how even the world is going to look at you. Applying these things are going to make you more promotable, are going to make you have good grades, are going to give you principles that will lead you to success in your life. Now, a second practical point and a practical reminder for all of our current Go Group out there. Well, let's have a few quick reminders on some best practices when it comes to our Go Group offerings. I want to remind you that when it comes to our Go Group offerings in all of our campuses, we have a special barcode that is made just for you for your Go Group. And it is on the orange sticker. Now that means Go Group orange. When you have your personal barcode, don't put that on your Go Group offering because it's not your personal offering. It is your Go Group. And also, don't put your Go Group sticker on your personal offering because that's not from your Go Group. That's from you. That's going to help us make sure that our records are good and correct for when you ask for your giving receipts, which you should ask for in Jesus' name. Now also, when it comes to your Go Group offerings, make sure when you come together as a Go Group, you have someone who is counting, someone who is checking, and that it's sealed. That's just very good transparency to make sure that no funny business is happening. It's not because we're accusing anyone, but it prevents anything from happening. Also, on a side note, no making change out of the offering either, okay? When you give it, it's considered holy. So don't go, oh, I need change for my 100. I'll go to my Go Group offering and get it from there. That's not what it's for. Also, a reminder, every single peso of our Go Group offerings goes 100% to missions work. So whenever you are giving in your Go Group, know that that's going to opening new churches, that's going to MMU, that's going to Crusades, and so much more. So truly, what you do in your Go Group is going to expand the Word of God. Last, but definitely not least, please remember that our Go Groups are a Bible zone and not a business zone. Keep the business out in Jesus' name. This side is amening, but this side needs some more. Keep the business out of the Go Groups in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're here to learn the word and apply biblical truth. We're not here to use one another. It's not one of the 29 togethers. There is no verse that says, hereby use one another according to the goodness of the Lord. It doesn't exist. Amen. Did you learn something tonight? So I know all of you are going to be very encouraged to be a part of a Go group, whether it is to lead or it is to join. When you came in today, you were given an opportunity when you walked in the door, and that is with our Go group registration sheet. Also, if you are here and you are techie, we also have a QR code that you can scan as well. Now, when you go and take a look at this sheet, and I want to encourage all of you to fill this out because we're going to bring it forward in just a few minutes, and our ushers are going to help us out with that. But when you bring it forward, it has the opportunity for us to take a look at the Go Group opportunities before us. Whether that is going to be, I want to be in a go group in our office. I want to be in a go group at your home or school. You want to open, you want to be a part of one. I am a business owner and I want to open a go group in my business place. I want to open a go group in my school or university. I want to be trained as a leader. So whether you're ready to open now, whether you want to be joined to one now, or you want to be trained to be able to be a leader, then this is for you. It's the same exact format as well on our QR, if we can keep the QR on the screen. And if you would please fill this out now, because in just a moment, our wonderful ushers are going to be collecting these down front. 
so that we can encourage you and follow you up. Now also, as you came in tonight while you're filling up this form, we gave you this bookmark. On one side, it has the scripture, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19, verse 10. But on the other side, the non-glossy side, it says, Reach my. And it has a space for you to write something or someone that you are going to reach out to. Now again, Jesus used the word go a lot. Go is an action word. So when you are reaching out for someone, you need to be writing someone that you are actively praying for, actively sharing the gospel to. Whether it is a person, a family member, someone on your street, in your apartment, whether it's a boss, a classmate, an office worker, whoever it is, you write down who is your reach my. And then keep your reach my in your Bible. When you go into your devotions each day, lay before God the person that you are reaching out for. When you come before God, say, Lord, I'm praying for, then give the example. Help me to reach out to, then give the example. Lord, I pray. Lord, soften up their heart and their eyes. Let their ears be open to the things of you. Father, as I go to share with them, I pray, Lord, let them be open to hearing of your word. And consistently pray and lay that person, that office, that school, that location, whatever it may be, before God each and every day. Amen? Now, if our ushers would please have the baskets down here in our campuses and branches. For those of you who filled up the form old school, I'd like to encourage you to come and bring the forms down. And for those of you who are filling up our forms modernly, I'd encourage you to press send and submit. We'll give just a tad bit of marching music as you come down. And please come on down and bring these forms in our campuses and branches. Thank you so very much. Come on down. the service if you have friends or family who aren't here tonight or maybe they are in a location that is not near a current COP location we'll also be posting this online please encourage them to fill up the QR code because even if they are not in Manila or near any one of our campuses or branches we would love to be able to help them be journeyed to our go groups and we're gonna learn a bit more about all those go group opportunities coming up when it is our missions weekend but whether they are in 
one of the provinces or any country around the world. We would love to help journey them to a GO group as well. At this point, can I please call on our campus pastors to help us and serve us communion. Amen. We can ask the ushers to assist us, please. As always in COP, before we dismiss, we want to remember what the Lord has done to each one of us. Amen. And we want to celebrate communion. As we celebrate communion, let's read this passage first. Psalms 103, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. If you can hold up the bread right now, let's all pray together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. Father, thank you that because of what your son, Lord, did on the cross, his death and his sacrifice, we stand before you, God, and we can receive healing. We can receive, God, health for our physical bodies. And thank you so much. Today, we remember that we can stand, Lord God, with peace in our hearts. We don't have to be afraid, oh Lord God. The doctor may say bad news about our health, we can stand on the promises that you have already given to us, on the finished work of your Son, Jesus Christ. That we're whole and we're healed by the stripes of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You declared us healed. And God, we receive your healing this evening. We thank you so much for the victory over any kind of sickness, over any kind of disease. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's partake the bread right now. Let's hold up the cup and let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much as well for our salvation. We thank you so much, God, that we can stand before the Father, pure and clean, without any accusations. Thank you, Jesus, that through your blood, you washed away all our, sin our sins. Lord, thank you so much, God, that we stand, Lord God, without guilt in our heart. We thank you so much you have put us in a position we can receive all the blessings of salvation and we remember them right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. that victory amen before we also dismiss as always cop we're here to assist you and maybe you have not yet signed and you have not made a decision to just become part of any bible studies in cop but you know that this is the message of our lord and savior jesus christ to you we're here to assist you please also visit our living zone center there will be pastors and pastoras will be more than happy to assist you and you know what it's about time as well to enjoy all those blessings of being connected 29 blessings, so 29 blessings as we are becoming part of that connection to the body of Christ. So let's enjoy that wonderful blessings that God has for us. And if this is your first time, we also want to welcome you and acknowledge you in the house of the Lord. 
COP, thank you for bringing them. As always, you are important to God, so we want to assist you in your spiritual growth. Please also visit our concierge on your way out so that we can bless you with a welcome token that later on you can exchange for your own Bible. And Wednesday to Friday is always our morning prayer, 5.30 in the morning. A great time to start our day seeking the Lord because our God truly hears and answers our prayers. So COP, join us once again next week. Let's all spread our hands towards heaven right now, and let's thank the Lord for the blessing of being planted into God's house. Let's just pray that God will also use us to be a blessing to, the, to other members of the body. Amen. Let's all pray right now and call on the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, thank you so much, God, for the truth and the blessing that you have given us to becoming, being part of this body of Christ planting us, God, into your family. Thank you so much, God. We do recognize, God, this is also your way, God, to help us, to grow us, and to build us up. And Lord, we pray it tonight as we have received that truth. We're also going to make a decision, God, to be part of what you're doing, to be part of this great family of God. And also, we present ourselves to you, God. Lord, use us as well to be a channel of your love, a channel of your blessing. Use us, God, to also build other members of the body with the talents and the abilities and the strength and the wisdom that you have given to each one. Lord, here we are, God. Use us, God. We want to be a blessing to you and a blessing to the body. Even as your people depart from your house, we're also receiving all the blessings of your house, Lord. Thank you for our healing. Thank you for our victory over any kind of sickness, any kind of disease. And also, God, we're receiving success and favor, God, all throughout next week. May your hand be upon your people. Dismiss us now once again with your love and with your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And God bless you and see you again next weekend.